When Walt first dreamt up his idea for Disney World, he wasn't thinking about rides or water parks or fireworks. His main concern was Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, a real city of the future. While the literal idea of Walt died with him, Walt Disney Productions would go on to build his Florida resort, and in the process they would still experiment with new ways to build and maintain the property. In the 1980s, one of those experiments would be a new power plant co-funded by the U.S. government. It would work, but it would also manage to be a short-lived failure. In 1980, Disney and the U.S. Department of Energy broke ground on the SWEC plant, otherwise known as the Solid Waste Energy Conversion Plant. It was a $15.5 million facility that would use a process known as pyrolysis to convert 100 tons of garbage a day into enough hot water to service the Magic Kingdom, Epcot Center, and two of the resort's hotels. The concept itself wasn't brand new. However, this would be the first ever commercial pyrolysis plant in the United States to be used for waste. The way the plant would work is that the collected waste would be dropped down a nine-story tall chamber that would be kept at 1700 degrees Celsius. The heat would cause the falling waste to pyrolyze, which means it would be decomposed into both volatile gases and solid residue. Now, if you were to add oxygen to the mix, you'd have all the ingredients for fire. But because in this case you don't, you're instead just left with the two. During the process, the gases would be pumped to a separate chamber while the remaining residue would continue, falling into a pool of water to cool down. Those gases would be mixed with oxygen so that they could burn, and the plan was for 80% of those gases to be burned off at Disney's water boiler, which would fulfill the hot water needs for the two theme parks and two of the resorts. The remaining 20% of those gases would be rerouted and burned off to help keep that nine-story tall chamber hot. Meanwhile, that inorganic residue, once cooled, would be broken up into a granular form. Disney had hoped that they'd be able to sell the residue where it could be used in construction, for instance as part of the creation of pavement. It was initially estimated that the 100 tons of garbage pyrolyzed every day would save Disney over 1 million gallons of oil per year, and the plant was even planned to serve more than just Disney World. Early on, the surrounding Orange County agreed to ship almost half of that daily waste allotment to the facility. Now, this entire process was not what one might traditionally imagine when they think of incinerating garbage. It wasn't shoveling trash into a big fire or anything, but the process still did result in gases that were burned off. However, this was 1980. Beyond the fact that there was less emphasis on green forms of energy back then, there was also the more attractive appeal of using less oil. The oil crisis in 1973 and the energy crisis of 1979 both had significant negative impacts, not only on Disney World but across the entire country. The price of oil over that decade rose from under $10 a barrel to nearly $40 a barrel. So this idea of being less reliant on oil, to the tune of 1 million gallons a year, would be a big benefit for Disney. Now, why was the Department of Energy footing part of the bill? Well, it was part of an initiative they were running in which they'd invest in these new projects as part of a cost-sharing program. The idea was that the DOE would help fund the initial project, and then over time they'd be paid back based on how much money the new plant was saving. On top of that, the Department of Energy would be watching the plant closely because for them, this would be a test run. They were hoping this technology would prove useful in processing radioactive waste over in Idaho Falls. So the plan was to build a much larger version of the SWEC plant over in Idaho in the event this plant would be a success. So what happened? Well, the construction ran into some delays, pushing the opening of the plant back a year. But in September of 1982, the SWEC plant began operations. And it worked! From a technical perspective, the plant did what it was meant to do. However, as Disney and the DOE would learn, it would be more expensive than they initially planned. According to a later study, the plant's flaws were that it would ultimately require more gas than originally intended to run, ended up using twice as much electricity as they planned for, and had trouble maintaining specific temperature zones needed for the process to work smoothly. On top of that, it would just so happen that oil costs would begin to drop. With all those factors put together, the plant ended up costing more to operate than it was worth, with an estimated annual cost of $730,000. 
In short, it was just cheaper to buy the oil and landfill the waste. Any other time, and it might have been worth the cost just to push the boundaries of experimental processes, but by the early 1980s, Disney was not in the strongest financial situation. The Department of Energy would end up opting for a cheaper system to deal with the Idaho Falls issue, and so with the plant being of no benefit to either party, it was shut down in February of 1983. Today, the concept of pyrolysis as a form of waste management still exists. Technology has improved over the years that make it both less impactful on the environment and more economical, but considering the core concept still involves creating and burning gases, it's not as popular as other, more green methods. The SWEC plant was hidden away, short-lived, and ultimately unsuccessful. However, in its few months of operation, it stood as one of many examples of how Disney tried to keep Walt's dream of Epcot alive, even if it was just behind the scenes. 